Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you'll need to know about the various different systems and gameplay mechanics in EVE Echoes. In today's lesson, we're continuing our series on exploration by having a look at relic sites and data sites. So by the end of this video, you should have a firm understanding on what these two sites are, what they contain, how to find them, how to access them, and we will even have a look at things like the skills and some of the different ships that you might want to use if you want to go hunting for these. Now, this video does assume that you have already watched the video on wide resonance scanning. If you have not watched the video on wide resonance scanning, I do strongly suggest that you pause this video now and go and watch that one first, as I will be expecting you to have knowledge on how that works, so I won't be explaining anything about that in this video. You have been warned ahead of time on that one. If you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, make sure to check out the Cat Skull Academy playlist for more lessons just like this one, especially the exploration playlist if you're interested in this particular career path in Eve Echoes, and of course, if you do want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page and a Redbubble merchandise store. That all said and done then, let's jump right in to talking about exploration in the form of relic and data sites. Relic sites and data sites are unique new exploration locations littered across New Eden. You'll find them in Highsec, Lowsec, and Nullsec, and you'll find them across all five empires of space, whether that's Serpentis, Gurustas, Angel, Blood Raider, or Sanchez Nation. This means that every single system in New Eden has the potential to spawn a relic site and or a data site at any given moment. They contain some pretty lucrative loot as well for anyone who is capable enough to scan them down and locate them, and then to actually hack into the cargo containers found within. And there are two different types, as I said, relic sites and data sites. Now, data sites have names like Local Serpentis Virus Test Site or Central Angel Mainframe, etc., and we'll talk about uh, the naming conventions more later on. Inside those data sites will be various structures that if you hack into them will contain things like data cores and what is being referred to as blue salvage loot, which is loot used in the production of the new integrated rigs. Relic sites, on the other hand, have names like Crumbling Serpentis Mining Installation or Decayed Gurustas Colony. These have various structures inside them, um, themed more around sort of ruins and debris, and again, these contain various loot items, like for example, rig blueprints, and the materials required to build rig blueprints, things like the charred nanite strips, etc. Now, in order to actually access these, as I said, you're going to need a blue wide resonance scanner in order to locate the data sites and relic sites, and inside them you will need either data analyzers or relic analyzers to hack open the various different cargo containers. So, I think it's worthwhile then talking about what uh, a data analyzer and a relic analyzer actually does. Let's have a look at the module stats then, starting with a Mark V data analyzer. So of course you should be familiar with how a basic info page looks, much of this is pretty self-explanatory, the meta level, simultaneous modules means you can only have one data analyzer fitted to your ship at any time, doesn't matter if they're different meta levels and different names, if it's a data analyzer you can only have one of them fitted to your ship at any time, they take up a mid slot. They have an activation cost, in this case 5.1 gigajoules, and they activate over a time of 5 seconds. It means once you've activated it, it's 5 seconds to cycle, during which it will attempt to hack open the cargo container. If it is unsuccessful, it will repeatedly attempt to hack open that cargo container until it either succeeds, or the cargo container's amount of attempts is exceeded, at which point that cargo container will just be destroyed and any loot within it lost. You then have an optimal range on each of these analyzers. Here on the Mark V, you can see that's an 8.96 kilometer range, so you need to be within that range in order to activate the module and attempt to hack into the particular cargo container. The analysis type here, it says one. When it says one, what that actually means is it's a data analyzer. You'll notice later on that there are different types of cargo containers. Some are data, some are relic. You can only use a data analyzer to open data containers. You cannot use a relic analyzer. It's a type one analysis type. The analysis strength then corresponds to how many different types of data container this can open. 
Now, data containers come in four levels of difficulty. Level 1 is a data shard, level 2 is called a comm tower, level 3 is a mainframe, and level 4 is a data bank. You will need to have sufficient strength on your module to be able to hack into it. In this case, you can see that here, this Mark V data analyzer is only analysis strength one, which means it is only capable of hacking into data shards. You cannot use this to open up a comm tower, a mainframe, or a data bank, because those are higher than possible here. You can also see there's an analysis success rate of 5%. This means that every time it cycles, there is a 5% chance that it will successfully decode the particular container. This, it seems like a very low chance. You can increase this with skills, as we'll see later. As we go up the meta levels and look at the different marks, you'll see that once we hit a Mark 7 data analyzer, we get a little bit of extra optimal range, which is nice. The key point here is that the analysis strength does increase immediately to strength 2, which means we can now open data shards and comm towers, and it's also at a 5.5% base success rate. A Mark 9 is not much better than a Mark 7, if we're being completely honest. It's got a tiny bit more range, it's got 0.5% increase as analysis success rate, but it is still only analysis strength 2. You're not opening anything new using a Mark 9 data analyzer. The first new comes at Seeker Data Analyzer. Again, we get a little bit more range. The analysis success rate goes up to 6.5%, but we now have analysis strength of 3, which means this module can open data shards, comm towers, and mainframes. The Federation Navy Data Analyzer, again, doesn't improve all that much. We get a little bit of analysis success rate, a little bit of optimal range, but it's still only analysis strength 3. The True Sancha Data Analyzer, on the other hand, this is the first one that goes up to analysis strength 4. It's a 7.5% success rate as well, which is pretty nice, compared to considering we started at 5%, but that analysis strength of 4 means we can now open data shards, comm towers, mainframes, and data banks. Finally then, we have the Guests Data Analyzer, which is the Meta Level 8 equivalent than the, mo uh, the most viable option we have. This has a success rate of 8%, an optimal range of 11.84, and still has that analysis strength of 4, so it can open up all four types of data containers. Now, it's worth noting that the Mark V, the Mark VII, and the Mark IX all drop in Gurustus or Serpentis anomalies that are medium or large and of a tier 5 or higher. Obviously, a Mark V drops in, Mark, uh, in tier 5 and 6, Mark VII drops at tier 7 or upwards, and Mark IX drops at uh, tier 9 and upwards, of course. These drop from the ore ships in the final waves of those anomalies. So when you complete a medium or a large anomaly, the final wave is usually a load of ore ships. If you destroy those, they have a chance of dropping a data analyzer. Only in Gurustus and Serpentis anomalies. If you're looking for the Seeker or the Guests data analyzer, these are both found in Storyline Supply Crates when you complete either Gurustus or Serpentis Storyline Encounters. As for the Federation Navy and the True Sanch data, at time of me making this video, these are not currently available in the game. What then about the Relic Analyzers? Well, Relic Analyzers, as we said, these are used to open up the cargo containers in Relic sites, and again, these have four different difficulty levels. Level 1 is Debris, Level 2 is Rubble, Level 3 is Remains, and Level 4 is referred to as Ruins. And like with the data analyzers, these are very similar on their stats. The meta level, the simultaneous modules, power grid requirement, activation cost, activation time, those are all the same. The main difference between a relic and a data analyzer comes in on the analysis type. Here you'll see the analysis type is 2, which means it can only open those debris, rubble, remains, or ruins. It cannot be used on data containers, only on relic ones. The optimal range here on a Mark V starts at 8.96 and the analysis success rate is 5%. The meta levels between the, uh, the relic analyzers and the data analyzers are absolutely identical. So if you're looking um, at these, you'll notice that the success rate and the range do increase. And again, we start with analysis strength here of only one on the Mark V. The Mark V can therefore only open debris. Once we go up to Mark 7, this goes up to Analysis Strength 2, which means we can now open Debris or Rubble. The Mark 9 remains at Strength 2, 
Once we go up to the storyline of Worker Shovel Relic Analyzer at meta level 5, this becomes an analysis strength of 3. This is our first one with analysis strength of 3. This can now open Debris, Rubble, and Remain. So once you're in a Relic site, you'll see there are things like if it's an Angel Relic site, it's Angel Debris, Angel Rubble, Angel Remains. This can go all the way up to Remains. And it's the same with the Imperial Navy variant here. This is still analysis strength 3. The range has increased and the analysis success rate has slightly increased as well, but it is still an analysis strength of 3. It's the domination that suddenly becomes analysis strength of 4, capping out with the Gravedigger Relic Analyzer at meta level 8. Again, analysis strength of 4, analysis success rate, base rate of 8%, with an optimal range of 11.84. Having that analysis strength of 4 means that the Gravedigger and indeed the Domination Relic uh, Analyzer can open up Debris, Rubble, Remains and Ruins. And inside the Relic containers, as I said, you will find things like basic blueprints, uh, rig blueprints and the different materials that you use to craft those. Now, if you're looking for Relic Analyzers, the Mark V, Mark VII and Mark IX drop in medium and large Tier V or higher Angel. Blood Raider or Sanchez Nation anomalies. So if you clear those anomalies, you'll have the Interbus ships at the end of those anomalies. Those have a chance of dropping Mark V, Mark VII, and Mark IX relic analyzers. The Worker and the Gravedigger both drop in the storyline supply crates of Sanchez Nation, Blood Raider, and Angel Cartel storyline supply crates. That's how you find them. Again, you can also buy them on the market. If you head to the market, you'll find these under mid slots. Scroll right the way to the bottom to space exploration modules, and just below where you have wide resonance scanners and narrow resonance scanners, you will have both the data analyzers and the relic analyzers. So, however you choose to source them, um, you will need either a, will need a relic analyzer to work on relic sites, and you'll need a data analyzer to work on data sites. Now it's worth noting that even though the data analyzers only drop in Gurustus and Serpentis space, and the relic analyzers only drop in Angel, Blood Raider, and Sanchez Nation space, all five empires have the capability of spawning data and relic sites. So you will need a relic analyzer with you, even if you're going through Serpentis space, because you will find both Serpentis data and Serpentis relic sites. Um, same with Gurustus, Angel Cartel, Blood Raider, Sanchez Nation, wherever you are, there is the possibility of finding both data sites and relic sites. Like most things in Eve Echoes, your ability to locate and hack into these data and relic sites can be influenced and improved by training into skills, and you'll find these skills here under Natural Science on the right hand side, and then under Exploration. Now, in the wide resonance scanning video, we've already talked about space exploration technology and how this can affect your wide resonance scanner. This is still very well worth training into because you are going to need to use that wide resonance scanner in order to scan down and locate your relic and data sites. And some of these can be very difficult to find. Some of them do have very small source radiuses and training high up into expert space exploration technology is very much worth it. In fact, with a fully rigged Ship that is designed for scanning with expert space exploration technology and a wide resonance scanner, finding some of the most difficult relic sites will still require you to analyze three different wavelengths. These are not simple sites to find, you are going to need to train into space exploration technology. But in addition to that, if you're looking to go into data sites and relic sites, we also have the hacking skill. Let's have a look at what this actually does. So you'll see here that training into basic hacking up to level 5 gives us a data analyzer success rate adjustment of plus 100% and a relic analyzer success rate adjustment of 100%. So you remember how that Mark V data scanner, uh, data analyzer, and the Mark V relic analyzer both had a 5% success rate every time they activate? If you have hacking trained up to basic 5, that's now a 10%. Again, it's not great, but you do have, I think, in certain cases, up to 15 attempts in order to open up um, some of these crates. The level 1, like the data shards and the debris, it's up 15 attempts maximum, whereas the ruins and the data banks, which are the difficulty 4 containers, those only have 8 attempts. So those are a little bit more difficult to open, and you're going to need a much higher uh, meta level module anyway, because you need that analysis level of 4, the analysis strength of 4 in order to get those, and it does come with a little bit extra um, of the uh, analysis success rate. 
Once we go into advanced hacking, again, five levels in advanced hacking gives us a 60% increase on top of this, and then expert hacking gives us a 40% increase on top. If you have all of these trained, that is plus 200%, which means the 5% suddenly becomes 15%, and the 8% maximum that you can get from a meta level 8 module becomes a 24% success rate, which is as good as you are going to get you'll find that there is nothing else that affects how effective your hacking can be. Only the meta level of the module and this skill. It's also worth noting that even having this skill trained all the way up to Expert 5 will not allow a Relic or Data Analyzer of a lower analysis strength to scan into something higher than it. So if you've got a Mark V Analyzer, it is only ever going to be able to open data shards and debris. No matter how well skilled you are, no matter what rigs or ship you're using, that meta level and the analysis strength is hard coded. If you want to be able to open up every form of cargo container all the way up to the difficulty fours, you are going to need either the Domination or the True Sancha variant at minimum, if not the Meta Level 8 storyline variants. They are hard coded to require that four analysis strength. Since relic sites and data sites have been added to Eve Echoes, one of the most common questions I've been asked is which ships are best for doing this in? And there are lots of different answers that you can give to this. The simple answer though is that you need to have a wide resonance scanner in order to scan down the sites, and then you're going to need your analyzers in order to open the loot. Now, considering that if you scan down a relic site, you'll need a relic analyzer, and if you scan down a data site, you're going to need a data analyzer, it is best to have three mid slots available. Ultimately, if you go with a ship that only has two mid slots and you find a relic site while you've got the data analyzer equipped, you're going to need to either ignore that site or find somewhere to dock up and swap modules, which is not ideal. Which is why it is so confusing and infuriating that the named explorer frigates, the probe explorer, the magnet explorer, the heron explorer, and the imicus explorer only have two mid slots. Which means that even though these guys get a bonus to things like scan resolution and your resonance simulator minimum scan, radius which looks like this would be really useful for this unfortunately the two mid slots really don't do this justice and you can't really do it in an explorer at the time of me making this video however if you wanted to use something like a slasher 2 interceptor or even just a slasher interceptor the tech 8 variant or any of the interceptors these do of course have the three necessary mid slots of course there is no additional bonuses to things like your scan resolution uh, so your scan radius and things like that um, on the scanners themselves, um, but as long as you've got those three mid slots, you'll do pretty well. I do also personally recommend having something that can use a Covert Ops cloak, just because you're probably going to be exploring through hostile territory, um, and thus there is the possibility of coming across um, hostile players. And of course, if you are in low sec or null sec, whilst you're in a relic site or data site, despite the fact that there are no pirates, there's no NPCs in there, other players can still find you, scan you down and kill you. As such, if you are trained into cruisers, then the Covert Ops line of cruisers are pretty good for this too. I actually personally use the Bellicose 2 Covert Ops for this quite a lot, because we've got four mid slots. That's one for the Wide Resonance Scanner, one for the Relic Analyzer, one for the Data Analyzer. Of course, the recent addition of the Sunasis, the, uh, the Society of Conscious Thought Destroyer, that does have scanning bonuses and it has three mid slots, which does work. I've even recently used the Talwar 2 Assault and gone out in that because it's got the low source radius and that means I'm hard to scan down. It's got pretty hefty uh, DPS and damage, so if I do get a, like happen to hit a small gate camp, I can either take it out or at least fight my way to victory. And the three mid slots, of course, support the modules that are required. Now, of course, there is one absolute answer to this question, which, of course, are the Servant Sisters of Eve ships. For example, the Astero. Now, the Astero not only has the necessary three mid slots, it has the ability to fit covert ops cloaking devices with some really nice abilities there, like the cloaking device lock delay. Now, a lot of people look at that and go, oh, this is awesome. You can fly up to people, drop your cloak and immediately lock. To me, as a scanning and exploration player, this is also awesome because it means if I use the covert ops cloak to jump into a relic site or a data site, I don't have to wait 30 seconds before I then lock onto the actual um, data containers and start to hack into them. Also, the reduction to the cloaking device reactivation delay means if I jump in and someone else happens to jump in right behind me, I can quickly cloak and make an escape. 
The additional cargo hold capacity, also pretty nice. Um, that means that whilst you're looting, you can stay looting for a long time. You'll find that the stuff you find in Relic and Data Sites isn't particularly cargo space like heavy. Most of it is blueprints and like rig construction materials, which are very light on cargo space. So you don't have to necessarily worry too much about that, but it's still very nice to have. Also, again, we have the Resonance Simulator minimum scan radius reduction there, and for each level we have trained into Advanced Frigate Defense, which helps us out on that. I do wish that that had been changed, actually, from Advanced Frigate Defense to something like Hacking, because it kind of puts more reason into it, or Space Exploration Technology, perhaps, in there as well, and just to kind of go with it. We do get some nice bonuses to Drone DPS and the HP if you want to take it into combat as well, but for the purposes of exploration, we can ignore that. And the same here goes for the Stratios. Again, we've got four mid slots, more than sufficient for the role. We've got that cloaking device lock delay, the ability to fit covert ops cloaking devices, um, and the reactivation delay reduction as well. Again, extra cargo hold capacity and the scan bonuses there all very nice to have. Basically what I'm saying is that if you can get your hot, uh, your hands on one of the Sisters of Eve ships, if you've managed to find debris through going through the arena, the faction war games, if you've ranked up high enough to actually be able to purchase the debris with your loyalty points, then you can build these ships and these are probably the top end for explorers and they are very very powerful ships for the purposes of exploration. But if you don't have access to those, any ship that has at least three mid slots is going to help, um, is going to be sufficient for doing this job. And you can, of course, rig um, for things like the gravity capacitors there in order to help your wide resonance scanners actually locate these sites. There are no rigs and no ships that give bonuses to the hacking attempts. Currently, at time of writing, if you're watching this at some point in the future, that may have changed, but for now, the only bonuses that are related to this are um, via on ships are to the wide resonance scanner helping you to actually locate the sites. No ship has bonuses to the actual analysis side of things. In order to properly demonstrate this, I've spawned both a relic site and a data site here in this nullsec system. Now obviously when you're in nullsec you do need to be careful of other players. You cannot activate a wide resonance scanner whilst cloaked, but if you activate the wide resonance scanner you can cloak immediately afterwards and the scan will still proceed. Nice little tip there to help keep you safe. Here you can see three signal waves have been detected. You can tap there to go straight through, but if, like me, you've missed the timer, you can tap go through to the star chart, and then on the right-hand side we can tap into the signal summary. Now here I have successfully scanned down the relic site and the data site. I'm not going to demonstrate how to do the minigame with the signal waves. If you've watched my video on how wide resonance scanning works, you should already understand about matching peaks to troughs and things like that. These are quite difficult to scan down. Depending whether you're in high sec, low sec, or null sec, you'll find the difficulty does increase from high sec to null sec. Now, to tell the difference between a relic site or a data site, you simply look at the name. Data sites follow a naming protocol where the word is either local, regional, or central, depending if you're in high sec, local, null sec, central, or low sec, with regional. So you've got that local, regional and then central from high sec, low sec and null sec. The second word will be Gurustas or Serpentis or Angel depending on what area of space you're in and then you'll have sort of a law based name. So you might find in high sec a local Sanchez Nation virus test site or a regional Serpentis mainframe in low sec and then in null sec here you could find something like a central Serpentis command center. Now, relic sites follow a similar naming convention. In high sec, they start with crumbling. In low sec, they start with decayed. And in null sec, they start with ruined. Followed by then the type of pirate, Serpentis, Gurustas, Blood Raider, Nation, or Angel. Followed by sort of the law based name. So again, you'd get something like a crumbling angel antiquated outpost, a decayed Nation mine, or a ruined Serpentis crystal quarry. Now, in this case, I've found a central Guristas data processing center, which is pretty obviously a data site, and a ruined Guristas science outpost, which is a relic site. So we're actually going to go to the central Guristas data processing center first of all, and you'll see that we can warp in directly 
or we can warp at range. I'm just going to go for the direct in warp, and you'll see that because obviously the Astero is using um, a Covert Ops cloak, it will warp whilst cloaked. Now, here you can clearly see that there's no one else in this system with me, but again, be aware that players can obviously scan down these sites themselves if they're trained with wide resonance scanning, and if they've got a good narrow resonance scanner, they may actually be able to find your ship and jump in that way if they're in for a bit of jolly piracy. So do be aware of that, just worth bearing in mind you may not be alone looking for these systems, so keep an eye on local, and if you're going to warp in um, cloaked, that's always a good thing, just in case there's someone else in the system. Now here, if we change our overview to view loot, you'll see that we have Gurustus databanks, Gurustus tow com towers, Gurustus mainframes, there is also a Gurustus info shard would be the other one. Now from lowest to highest, the Gurustus info shard or angel info shard, info shards are the easiest boxes to open, followed by the com towers, then the mainframes, and then the data banks. So the uh, the info shards are difficulty one, the com towers are difficulty two, the uh, mainframes are, da uh, are difficulty three, and the data banks are difficulty four. Bear that in mind when you're picking your module and which ones you're going to jump in with. Now here I'm going to need to drop my cloak because I need to be able to lock on to these. Now I'm going to just go for the com tower first of all because it's nice and close. So we need to lock on to it. I'm then going to approach to about five kilometers, somewhere around there. You'll have the actual range on your data analyzer here. You can see 11.84 kilometers. So as long as I'm within 11.84 Ks, we should be good. So we just drift a little bit closer. Now I am going to activate the micro warp drive here for a cycle just to get us a little bit closer, a little bit quicker. And you can see the comm towers there are these cool little gyroscope like structures. Now that we're in range, we're going to activate the module. Now, obviously, the higher meta level module, the more difficult chests you can undo, and the higher likelihood you have of getting that chest quickly. Here you can see the comm tower was nice and easy. I've opened that one pretty much straight away, and I can loot it all. Let's go towards this data bank now. Um, again, we are going to hit approach, and we're going to go to about 10 kilometers. It's worth noting as well that if you try to hit loot on one of these, it'll tell you that it's been encrypted and requires a special device to encode. If you're worried that the site may have already been looted, just check loot. If you uh, hit loot on a particular box and it has been looted, it'll tell you you're too far away and it'll try and drift you closer, at which point you know it's already been looted. You don't need to worry about it. You can move on to the next one. Now here we have a data bank. I remember, I remember I said that the data bank is a difficulty four. So if we have a look at our data analyzer, you'll see at the bottom we have analysis strength four. If you do not have analysis strength four, you will not be able to get a data bank. These are the hardest ones to get. And amazingly, I got it first time there. So we can now actually, um, oh no, no, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. There we go. We are going to lock onto this and try and loot that one there. Let's see how many attempts this takes. There we are. Failed attempts. There's seven remaining. You see there's a 24% chance of me getting this each time. If I fail to get it, it will uh, self-destruct and explode. It doesn't do any damage, but it does mean that anything that was inside there will be lost. So we're just going to keep cycling there. Come on. 24% attempt. Come on. We can do it. We can do it, you've got three attempts left. The uh, the higher the difficulty as well, the fewer attempts you'll have to do it. It's eight on, a, on the most difficult, 15 on the least difficult, so you do get a little bit easier chance. Oh, we're gonna get a nice demonstration here of what happens if you fail to decode it. There we are, the encrypted box has been destroyed as it is overburdened. We can unlock that one as well now. So that gives us just a basic example and an understanding of how the data site works. Now, obviously, if I were to lock onto one of these and try with a relic decoder, it's just going to tell me straight out, up and down. Nope, can't do that. So let's go back into the view here, and we are going to go to the ruined Gurustus. Now, one, the ruined Gurustus science outpost. And again, we're going to warp in at zero. It's worth noting as well that once you have actually analyzed the site and located where it is in space, you can also go to wherever it is that you have your cosmic anomalies or things as per your overview, and it will appear here as well. You can see there the central Gurustus data processing center is the one that I'm leaving, coming now to the ruined Gurustus science outpost. Don't worry about the era mega rift, that was an event thing for the anniversary. 
here we are now in the ruined Guristus science outpost. So again, we'll change that across to loot. And here you can see that we have some Guristus remains and Guristus ruins. These are the difficulty three on the remains and the four are the Guristus ruins. You'll find debris is your difficulty one. Difficulty 3 is the remains, difficulty 4 is the ruins, and difficulty 2 is, I believe, rubble. So you'll find, like, angel rubble is difficulty 2, um, angel ruins are difficulty 4, etc, etc, like we've just discussed before. So let's have a look at one of these ruins. Again, it's very much the same situation. We lock onto it, we hit our approach, move into range. Again, the relic analyzer has a range here of 11.84 kilometers. It's about the same. We're in range now, so we can activate the Relic Analyzer, and the same thing is going to happen. It's going to activate um, each time and attempt to decode the loot. There we are, so that has now been decoded. Um, I have jumped out of the 11 kilometer range, so let's go into the range. There we are, there's some nice blueprints there, and some metal scraps. I want to try that with the ruins here as well, with the ruins being the difficulty four, most difficult one of these to actually do. So let's approach there for zero. Once we're in range, activate the relic analyzer, and that's going to do its best to try and decode this one. Remember, I should have eight attempts. First attempt has failed, that 24% has failed. And again, six attempts remaining. This just proves that even with maximum skills, it's not always easy to do. It's also notable as well, you don't get anything in these more difficult boxes that you won't get in the lower boxes. Literally, everything that you see on the screen here can be found in one of the level 1 boxes. If you'd just come in here and you'd found Guristas Debris or Guristas Rubble, you'd also be able to find these in here. It's just the amount of the items that are in them. This means that personally right now with the prices that we're seeing on the market about 1.6 to 1.9 billion for a meta level 8 decoder, remember meta level 8 is the only one that can actually open a ruins relic or a uh, data bank um, data site. Those can only be opened using the meta level 8 modules. But if you find a site here I can't open the ruins if I had a meta level th uh, meta level 5, for example, a strength 3, analyzing strength 3, I would only be able to open the remains, but I would still get that the, the same loot, just not the same amount of it, and I'm not entirely sure that's worth the 1.6 or the 1.9. It just means if you don't have access to the top level scanner, you're still going to get some pretty cool loot, um, and it's still well worth going around and looking. Even if you only have a Mark 9 or a Mark 7 or a Mark 5, Get out there, find some data sites, find some relic sites, open some loot and take it to the market. The rarity of the loot and the type of loot, the individual types of rig blueprints or the individual data cores, etc., are of course tied to the type of uh, site that you're in. Guristas will of course have um, like more Kaldari themed loot, whereas Serpentis will have more of the uh, Galente loot, that kind of thing. If you're this far in, you should understand basically the kind of things you're expecting and anticipating to find in those there. Otherwise and there we have it. Everything you need to know to get started scanning down and analysing relic sites and data sites. Now, at the time of writing this, I'm currently going through every single type of relic site and data site in New Eden in order to find out what the names actually mean and what kind of structures are within them. Basically, what's the difference between a local Serpentis virus test site, a local Serpentis mainframe, a regional Serpentis mainframe, or a central Serpentis command center? What do they have in them, like how many info shards, how many mainframes, how many comm towers, things like this. And I will eventually, once this is is complete, put a link in the description of this video that will link to a Google document explaining all of that and giving you an idea of exactly what is in every single one of these sites. It's a big project, so don't expect it anytime soon, but do make sure to check back from time to time to see if that has been added. I will probably give a nice big shout out as well on the Catskull Discord when that project is completed. So do make sure that you are on the Catskull Academy Discord. It's linked in the description down below. Um, it's a great place to hang out. You can talk with a load of folks who are eager to help new aspiring players into New Eden and give them the very best start possible. 
Anyway, folks, I hope that's been informational for you. I hope you enjoy going around these relic and data sites. Eventually, at some point in the future, NetEase have said that they do intend to implement the hacking minigame. Um, the wording in the patch notes when relic and data sites was added was that currently these are fairly easy to decode and therefore no manual input from the capsule is required. The keyword being currently so it is something that they are looking to add in the future so if by this point in time you're watching this in the future and that's already been added do keep watching there will be a video on this channel explaining how that mini game works when it's added otherwise folks thank you for watching this one right the way to the end happy sailing and see you in new eden